one. Hello, hello. We are back <laughs> with Lavender Shadows. I gotta say, I am so excited to play some role-playing games with you guys again. Yeah. It has been far too long. Let's roll some dice. Let's have some fun. Okay, let's do beliefs and instincts, like we do. Oh, with of the good course, old like wheel. we do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one's definitely me. I got it right on the first time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> did you click on the wrong character first? No. <laughs> okay. Why would you think that, Caleb? I, I don't, no reason. No <laughs> I reason. specifically said I got it right on the first right. time. Okay, I should just believe you. Yep. <laughs> All right, Marco Tisby, what are your beliefs? instincts and traits my friend beliefs are i could find the killer i will find justice uh i'll find out what happened to ferrand i could find a better life <laughs> i'll bring my family out of poverty i'll prove him the right man for the job people are inherently not trustworthy i will discover if joe anything to do with the crime True. instincts are i always have <clears throat> a knife on me i always make sure i know who's in the room i always have an alibi ready cool <laughs> and then so many which, traits. Which traits too yeah mm-hmm um, Rabble Rouser, Shrewd, Drop Dead Gorgeous, Chronologue, Odd, Frugal, and Emotional. Nice. And you also have the die traits Cold Blooded, Jaded, and Thick Skin. You know, you're just such a happy, friendly person. Uh, happy, friendly, attractive person. True. <laughs> I mean, he's played by Jake Gyllenhaal, so. Marguerite LeBlanc. Okay, you? let's see if I can do this as fast as Seth. <laughs> Hard work is more valuable than raw talent. I will impress the instructors with my improvement. My needs come first, then Isabeau's needs, then everyone else. I will convince someone to become Isabeau's nanny. Men are weak and easily swayed. I will use one to find out what happened to Lord. I don't know how you Bacard. say it. The card. The card. Instincts. I always try to flirt my way out of problems. If anyone tries to ask about my personal life, I try to deflect slash change the subject. Mm -hmm. And then my traits are flowery, colorful, fretful, industrious, tolerant, and downtrodden. Nice. And you also have a sonorous voice. Yes. Yes, yes you do. And Emily also has a sonorous voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh you. <laughs> Stop. Josephine Joe Boulet. Who are you? Okay, I am a strong, independent woman who don't need no man, and I will make sure I spell Gilbert indifferent to me. Gilbert. I will, the ancient language must not be forgotten. I will continue to teach Vivian. The Forsaken Quill Society is without a leader. I will resume that position. Mm -hmm. uh, instincts, if someone has romantic interest in me, push them away. If someone asks me about sign language, I will begin to teach them. Mm -hmm. um, always call out a liar. And then my traits are um rabble rouser ink stained hands no nonsense headstrong traditional and sophisticated nice you also have the traits mark a privilege bookworm and driven yeah yeah good old josephine and last but certainly not least vivianne august beliefs i believe someone can love me i will find them and return the favor um and then i will discover if frederick really cares for me or not right I believe I owe Joe much. I will heed her advice. I believe plants can teach people about patience and beauty. I will teach someone to appreciate my garden. You've tried. <laughs> you really yeah, just I've need tried. someone to appreciate your garden. Uh, instincts, always be kind even in the face of disrespect. Never neglect to send a swiftly written reply to a letter and always have a good book on my person. Mm -hmm. What are your traits? Um, rabble rouser, earthy smell. Salt of the earth, sophisticated, headstrong, and traditional. You also have affinity for plants, oh, marker privilege. Plants and marker privilege. And down, to earth. And down to earth. Down to earth, yeah. yeah. Everyone always forgets about their dye traits and <laughs> literally. color Literally. Yeah. She's literally down to earth. <laughs> mm -hmm. So funny. I mean, it's a call on for flower wise, so yes. <laughs> I love how you have the trait earthy smell. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the thing that's true about your character, apparently. Well, maybe not for the next week. That's true. Oh, that's sad. That's very sad. Okie dokie. So, um, one quick thing that I wanted to run through. Um, there are a few... Oh, one thing I should run through first, because um, Marguerite was not... Emily was not here last time when we talked about Arthur. <laughs> so, you have Fate and Persona. Yes. Fate points... Yeah. Actually, you don't have any persona, but you could get some persona. Fate points can be used to re-roll 
all sixes in a, in a, in a roll. So say you didn't succeed on a roll, but you have some sixes that you've rolled. You can spend a fate and re-roll all of those sixes, and you can keep rolling them as long as you keep rolling sixes. Um, so it, it open ends the die, and you can roll more successes possibly and increase your, your roll. Um, you can also spend one fate to re-roll one failed dice. So you can technically, at the, if you fail a roll, you can look at your roll and be like, okay, can I, do I want to spend one or two fate on this? You have to decide beforehand. But you can be like, I'm going to roll all my sixes and one failed dice. And you can spend two fate and do that and then re-roll all those dice. Uh, you can also spend a fate to uh, negate a plus one ob penalty. So if you had like a complication or a slight wound, you could um, spend a fate point to negate that penalty. Persona can be used to add a die to a roll. Um, so you just spend one persona per one die. You can also spend persona to not die. Um, so if you get into a situation where you would face certain death, you could spend a persona and reroute the narrative away from your certain death into another complicated situation that you have to find your way out of. Um, and you can also, you have to spend a persona point if you get a mortal wound to live. If you get a mortal wound and you don't have a persona point, you will die. Um, but nice. spending that persona point ensures your life. And you can also spend a persona point to negate uh, higher wound penalties. So those are all options. So those can be things that you can do, you can use to help you succeed on rolls. The other thing I wanted to mention is there are also um, three things that uh, related to rolls that are uh, important to know. You can work carefully if you're making if you're making a test of any sort. You can say I am working carefully, um, and it increases the time to make that test by half. Um, half again, but it grants a plus one die advantage. So you can say, I'm taking my time doing this and give myself a die. Um, yeah, if you have to say this before the dice are rolled, if the player fails a test in which he is working carefully, the result indicates that he has run out of time. That's the failure condition. So something related to you taking too much time is probably what's going to lead to your failure there. Um, you can also work patiently which means you can allocate extra successes above and beyond what you get on a roll to uh, make the quality of a finished project extra. It's mostly like narrative stuff, but it's like, um, say you, uh, you are testing to kill someone and you get some more successes over the, the obstacle. You can just be like, I kill them in the coolest way possible and everyone <laughs> around me sees it, right? That could be a thing you could do with uh, patiently. Um, and then you can also work quickly. If you succeed on a roll and you have obstacle, you have uh, successes over the obstacle, you can allocate one success um, each to reduce, reduce the overall time it took you to do that test by 10%. So you say you had three successes over the obstacle. You could say it took me 30% less time to do that thing. Um, those are all options that you can have as well for rolling stuff. Okay. There are several places we could go at the beginning here. Um, but I think what makes the most sense is we should see what's going on with Marguerite because Marguerite hasn't, we haven't seen what she's been up to in a while. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> unless you don't want us to start with you, unless you'd like us to start with someone else. That's also totally fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, um... I knew, or I remember that you have a belief based off of finding someone to be Isabeau's nanny. Maybe it's the true. first thing we see for today's session is we get a, a shot of your house. What does your house look like, Marguerite? Where do you live? Um, it's just a very basic, like, little cottage type house. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like on the outskirts of town. Yeah. Uh, like a good walk to the to get into the town. Um, it's it's really nothing impressive yeah. or distinctive about it. It's just a cottage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we see a nondescript cottage, and we, we kind of zoom in through the window, um, and we see you waking up. What does your like morning routine look like? Like, what do we see? Like. Yeah, what do, what do we see from Marguerite's life? Well, after getting uh, the proper amount of beauty sleep. Right, of course. Very important. My eyes uh, gently dance open to do some uh, <laughs> gently morning... Gently dance open. 
Yes. <laughs> of course, Jeez. that would be how Marguerite describes herself waking up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, and then I do some uh, morning stretches to limber mm. up for the day of dancing and singing mm-hmm. and acting and hopefully doing all of it as well as I can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. And then after a little bit of daydreaming about wall stretching, about, you know, being an exquisite dancer and singer and actress, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I remember I have a child. and <laughs> Yeah, maybe we so... hear, we hear, okay, I think we, what we hear is we hear this like soft, um, beautiful music, like this virtuoso violin just kind of like playing in the background as you're just like stretching languidly and doing, you know, you're, you're practicing some, some of these dances. And you're just kind of like in your own little world, right, as you're doing this. And then suddenly you're jarred out of this like reverie and you just hear, Mom! 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 One minute. And I uh, start getting up from my stretching and take a like, to like walk out into the hallway. Yeah, just kind of, you're preparing yourself for the performance of being a mom. Yes, yes. The performance of my life. Yes. Awesome. Um, Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, to prepare a nice breakfast of, you know, some buttered bread. (laughs) <laughs> right, of course, because you're a baker. Yeah, I'm a baker, and I'm not great <laughs> at other skills of the home. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so you you go ahead and just start like making breakfast, basically. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You hear again, mom. It's like from her bedroom. What What's wrong, darling? <laughs> <laughs> there's There's something under my bed. It's called the floor. <laughs> we walk on it every day. No. There's something dark and scary under my bed. Nope. Okay. Come okay. chase it away. <sighs> I'm coming. Okay. Walk into her bedroom <laughs> to chase away the scary thing. Yeah, so you walk in there and, and you see her basically over it, like um uh push pull pull the blankets like up to her 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 chin, right? And she's just like going like this and like looking down at under her bed sort of thing. And she says, I saw something move. There's something under there. Okay, and I would like to, you know, gracefully dip down to look underneath her bed <laughs> even in maybe regular... doing maybe doing a grand plié as, as it's right happening, of course you know? of course oh wow <laughs> marguerite is so extravagant um so just a reminder this is what isabeau looks like um she is this cute little darling um with her brown hair her, her dirty blonde kind of brownish hair um and she is uh yeah she she kind of like goes like this as she like watches you look down um and yeah i think you see something move like you're not sure what it is uh as soon as i look down there i go oh (laughs) yeah (laughs) see see i told you there's something under there there. it's a monster there is something uh possibly (laughs) we don't know yet uh i think we'll have to find someone to to figure it out because I'm not going to deal with whatever's <laughs> going on under there. I can't climb under there. Yeah. How silly. So I'd like to scoop Isabeau up and right. <laughs> go find a neighbor. Okay. Yeah. So you just scoop her up. investigate. Okay. I mean, yeah. Do you want to make a circles test to have a oh. friendly neighbor? <laughs> sure. How do I? I just. Okay. So, dice. yeah. What is your intent specifically? You just want a neighbor to be friendly. yes to find maybe a man neighbor who is useful for things of, of this nature right of course yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> for a single woman and her young daughter who mm-hmm, lives mm-hmm. Who live alone of course with uh, no one to protect them <laughs> <laughs> so i think it's gonna be an ob two circles um okay and you have a two in circles so uh you let's see <gasps> 
trying to think if you have any you can't uh, fork into a circles roll but you can make linked tests i'm not sure you have unless you want to <laughs> increase the odd uh, by saying i have a noble who man who lives next to me and then you can roll a noble eyes test but that would be like no. mob three yeah exactly it doesn't make much sense that would be silly it would it would be silly and very unlikely that you just have randomly have a noble for a neighbor yeah uh, okay yeah so you just want to roll yeah i'll just yeah, roll two versus see. two you need a difficult test anyway to advance it so base obstacle two Mm-hmm. Okay. <gasps> oh there you go nice. you got it i have a neighbor who is friendly yeah you have a friendly <laughs> neighbor all right so you can mark that difficult test on your oh. little bubbles there next to your circles you need one go. more routine and you will upgrade your circles so you just need wow. to find someone you need to maybe circles up some noble nobleman or something and uh that'll be probably easier for you to do you can uh link in noble wise uh cool so let's see what kind of i don't know you tell me emily what kind of neighbor is this obviously it's a man because that's what you specified yeah yeah probably someone that i who will be friendly enough where i walk up to them and i would be like Oh, like I've never noticed you around here before, except it's probably someone who's very nice, but has lived there like our entire lives and mm -hmm. I should definitely know them. Right. Of course. Um, let's see this guy. Um, this guy's name is Rowan Darcy. Um, and he is Mr. Darcy. Yeah, it's Mr. Darcy. Um, he's Finnish. He has two first names and two last names. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's Finnish. So um, he's you know a foreigner. Uh, he kind of like he has a uh, um, this kind of like extensive vegetable garden uh, behind his cottage here, um, and uh, he's just like a kindly like el uh, like up middle upper middle age guy um, who. Uh, you know, he kind of just keeps to himself. But, uh, yes, yeah, so you go up. You have, like, Isabeau scooped in your arms. And you just walk over. You see him, like, you know, pulling some carrots out of the... Out of his vegetable garden or whatever. Yes. Ex excuse me. I uh, hate to interrupt your very important task right now. Oh. As I, like, kind oh, of, wait. like... It's no trouble. And he kind of, like... <sighs> Uh, pull, you know, uh, stands up, puts his carrots in his little wheel wheelbarrow, and like kind of pulls off his gloves. Well, what can I do for you? Um, could you come look at something in our our cottage? Uh, I think we might have uh some animal underneath my small daughter's bed. Ah, some sort of a uh, vermin, you think? Possibly. Hmm, nah, can't have that. They're carriers of disease, you know. And he, like, kind of hobbles over a little bit. He has, like, a little bit of a limp. Um, and he, um, uh, he, he walks over, um, and, uh, you know, I, I assume you, like, lead him into the house. Yes. And he... But I, I stand at the doorway and, like, right, gesture to the bed while stepping back. Yeah, so he, like, he walks over, and then he just kind of, like, rolls up his sleeves and kind of, like, squats down and kind of, like, looks underneath, and he says, Ah! Yep, there it is. And he like reaches underneath and pulls out like this rat by the tail. He's like, ah, oh, that's a nasty bugger. Ah, uh, well, you, you of course you wouldn't want uh, one of these uh, roaming around your house again, plague and all. I once uh, had a cousin uh, back back home who uh, got bit by one of these wow, things. Wow, wow, and... cousin! Oh, how wonderful to hear that you have family. <laughs> oh, I must be getting back to mine, and I kind of like. <laughs> okay, yeah. So to my daughter. He 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 starts to like, uh, walk walk over again. He he has the rat. He's just like, you you don't want anything to do with this. You want me to cook it up, maybe? Oh, I could not put you out for that. No, no. All right. It's very okay. You can you can keep him for yourself. Yeah, I'm not really into rat myself. Had a had a an ex wife who was so once. Wow, you were married. How lovely that you have had a love life. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, have a good day. I, I suppose I should be uh, getting back to my garden. Well, uh, it, it's uh, it's a pleasure, uh, Miss. Uh... Does he 
It's a, it's a, pl the pleasure's all mine, Miss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wow. So, all right. I see how this is. <laughs> um, yep. So he just kind of like nods. Oh, as he's like walking away, I'm like, oh, do you like children? <laughs> I mean, I've had a few myself over the years. They're all grown up now, but yeah. That did, uh, okay, I was about to be like, that didn't answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have many different jobs to be able to keep this up, but I also have Isabeau here. Would you be able to maybe sometimes look after her? He thinks about it for a moment, and then he like looks at the rat. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> and he kind of nods to himself. I, I suppose I could probably do something like that. Oh, thank you so much. What did? What's your name? Uh Darcy. Uh, Rowan Darcy. At your service. And he like holds out his left hand to like shake yours, the one that doesn't have the rat in it. <laughs> I kind of him just holding Isabel with both my hands so I go <laughs> right and he just nods ah. uh, I mean yes when when would you need me to watch her I, I mostly just kind of keep to myself here tend to my garden oh so you're here just kind of all the time most days I, I do some handy work around the this part of the town a little bit for some, some folks but uh, nothing that I couldn't have uh, little Isabel here tag along Isabel, does that sound good? Um, she kind of frowns. Yeah, do you like give her the look like it better sound good? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna want you to make a roll with that like <laughs> eye. With there. my look. I, I th so I think right away she says, uh, I don't know. The nice man caught the monster under your bed for you. <laughs> yeah, so so you're like He's nice. You should. This is in your best interest. Okay. Yeah. I think this is a persuasion test. Um. Luckily for you, Isabeau has a will of two, so, um. So that's the base ob. Let's see if there's anything else. Do you want to try to lie to her about any part of this? Add a lie to this. You can fork and falsehood. <laughs> um. Let's see. I could, I could be like, he has a garden. I'm sure you'll love gardening. It's, it's so great. <laughs> I mean, I love gardening. I'm sure you'll love it too. Right. Okay. Yeah. Sure. You can add a false. You can add a false dive with that. Excellent. So just one modifier. Yeah. One modifier ob two. Mm -hmm. Ob two. Okay. Come on, Isabel. No. Okay. So you can spend one fate to reroll one failed dice if you would like. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. Isabeau's got to go with this guy. I got to go to work today and be yeah. really good at dancing. <laughs> and the thing God, is, like, you so... can't. So you can't. It's not that you. Uh, she will refuse and like because you could obviously just force just be her upset. to. What would? Well, yeah. What, I think the failure condition here. What would probably happen is she would probably like try to like run away or like cause him trouble or something like that. Um, He's if, had if children. He can handle it even <laughs> if I fail. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, but you, so... you can certainly just force her to do it no matter what. So I just. Yeah, just uh, slash just roll, roll a D6. Yeah, do the, yes, D6. And then uh, what you're going to do is d uh, have a um, greater than four. Just right after. Yep. So the D6, D greater than four. And that should tell you whether or not it's a success just automatically. No. Zero successes. All right, no. so so Isabeau uh, will, I mean, you, you, you force her to, obviously, but... Um, she's not too enthusiastic about it, so there will be some trouble. Um, you can mark... Um, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, oh, to today would be great. <laughs> right, you just, like, <laughs> shove her into his hands. Oh, wait, wait, let me, let me grab her breakfast before she <laughs> Yeah, so I guess you're just like, oh, oh, uh, I suppose so. I mean, I'm just gonna be working in my garden today. Oh, oh wait, she's, she's still in her, her night clothes. Yeah, and you, we'll so, be over in about five. <laughs> okay, yeah. He's like, I need to get rid of this rat anyway, and then he just starts like walking out. Um, and I think Isabel pretty much right away is just like, Mom, I don't want to go with him. I want to stay with you. Can I? Can I go and watch the dancers? Honey, 
this is a really good life lesson. We can't always get what we want. Do you want to roll a child re rearing test? <laughs> oh, my God. oh. <laughs> to teach her? <laughs> Sure. Yeah. Do you want to start learning I'm child teaching rearing? teaching her important life <laughs> lessons as her mother. Exactly. Uh, go ahead and add in to being learned there on the on the bottom of the page. Add. Yeah. Add a being learned skill. Child rearing. Child. You're going to be horrible at this at first. <laughs> How dare you? I'm just saying. Um, what is it? So child rearing is used to raise children with the proper values and manners. Um, the skill can also be used as instruction, cooking, and field dressing, but only for the benefit of children. So basically, this is just like being a mom is this skill. Is it will-based? Uh, it is will, yes. Okay. Based on will. Um, and the, your obstacle here is going to be a two. Oh, man. It's based on her will. Two. So your intent, I assume, is to help her understand that in life, she doesn't always get what she wants. <laughs> Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep, I'm too. Additional complications, nope. zero. Okay. Oh, well, well, you got you got a good roll there, honestly. Uh, you have a six, and you have, you could reroll a failed dice. You have, what, one, two fate left? No, no, it's not that you important care, to, care me, that to, life? to be yeah. a good mother. <laughs> What are you? Crazy? I didn't think so. Okay, so mark a, oh, no. mark a bubble on child rearing there. Uh, you're, there we go. You need six tests. I tried. Tests. You need five more tests to open child rearing. Uh, but you did try. Uh, she will not learn that lesson. Uh, so what you can do also, go ahead and mark uh, a routine and persuasion. A routine and persuasion. Okay. And then put in that little bubble next to the persuasion the fp and one D in the, yeah one and the f one f you, yep because you spent a, a fate on persuasion sounds good so yeah uh is you hand off isabeau to the old van darcy and and then <laughs> head into tower he seems trustworthy <laughs> enough with i mean he seems a little eccentric but he's not he's not like a bad dude yeah. no that i know of mm -hmm. i mean you succeeded on the circles role he's not he's Exactly. Uh, yeah, so do you head to the Harmony Opera House? I do. Okay, sounds good. You shove some buttered bread <laughs> into Isabeau's hands and then leave her with an old man <laughs> in the garden. Shove it in her mouth, hands her to the bed. <laughs> yep. Yep. Okay. Goodbye, Isabeau. <laughs> Mommy will be back tonight, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So you head to the Harmony Opera House. And I think um, you see that there is a, um, I mean, you know, the, the various actors and dancers and singers and whatnot are, are, are getting there and practicing and doing their thing. Um, but you notice that um, uh, Mr. Bertrand Crozier, the now only sole owner of the, uh, the Harmony Opera House, is uh, making some sort of notes on like a some sort of parchment um, as he's kind of like looking at like, he's kind of like a uh, backstage and he's like analyzing the, some of the dancers and the singers and stuff like that. And he seems to be like kind of making notes to himself and like looking around at various people. Um, what do you do? Do you just like start practicing? Do you go talk uh, to someone? Well, I mean, I've already warmed up, so I would want to, you know, show off my dancing skills as if he's making notes for people okay yeah you want to try to do a dance test to like as i am a dancer yes right um let's see yeah i think that makes sense you can roll a dance test to um get him to notice you yes, yes. what kind of dance are you trying to do oh uh, clearly a seductive dance oh of course okay that's a base of three Lots of winking yeah. and Gosh. suggestive movements. Uh, just a reminder, um, Bertrand Crozier is played by Woody Harrelson. Um, oh, with that guy again. That guy. Oh, I would, I would probably choose not to do that. Okay. <laughs> Last time I very failed mm -hmm. with that. Uh, I would just instead just be uh, dancing, but very conspicuous so he would notice me and my excellent skills. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so a not, not so seductive dance, but a, a dance all the same. Yes, just very attention gathering. Okay. 
Uh, let's do let's still let's do base ob three because it's still like a formal dance. You're trying to do have technical excellence here. Um, but you can fork in whatever you think might make sense. Obviously okay. conspicuous. Forking in conspicuous, mm -hmm. and then. Do you want to be singing as you do it? <laughs> Are you acting out a particular scene that has a dance associated with it? I think I'm just dancing. If everybody else is just dancing, mm -hmm. maybe I, I wouldn't be dancing and acting. Maybe I'd be dancing and singing to have myself stand out a little more. Okay, yeah. But this early in the morning, I can already do both. Maybe on the way, I was, you know, doing some vocal warm-ups. Mm -hmm. Unique New York, unique, <laughs> unique old York, unique old York. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, okay. Yes, yeah, so you can fork in conspicuous and sing. Okay, and that's probably it. Mm -hmm. So it's ob three. It's ob three. Yep. Okay. Here we go. Am I a dancer? Nope. So close. You have a six. <laughs> but I want to be, and I got a six, so I'm going to try again. So you can spend one or two faith, right? So you can spend uh, just the one and just reroll the six, or you can spend two and also reroll one of the failed dice. You have two fate. So it depends on how important this is to you. I need to be noticed. <clears throat> I'm using both of my fate. All right. Yep. Roll 2d6. Okay. Greater than four. And then if, if, you want to, if you want to, at the end <gasps> of the greater than four, put an exclamation point, and we'll automatically reroll if it, you get a six. So we'll keep uh, rolling just with an exclam again. exclamation point at the end of the, the whole macro. Yeah, got it. There you go. It's more Two than more you successes. Do. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think what happens right is is uh, uh, Bertrand Crozier seems to, he obviously notices you and then he kind of like nods to himself and makes a note and then he he kind of like does one of these where he sets it down on like a some sort of crate or whatever and then he just like does like a clap to like kind of like uh, attention sort of a thing and you know the people stop doing doing their thing um and, and kind of look and he's like uh fellow or you know i'm trying to think of how what he would how he would refer to you all i don't know if you'd say yes yes cast there is a opportunity that has arisen that i thought you might want to be made aware of uh you may be aware of the uh respectable noble family the clay bears um and you're very familiar with the clavers um <laughs> and uh yeah he he says well they're holding a ball next week and uh it seems that they're uh the uh performers they had hired uh, due to some sort of travel incident uh they got caught up in a uh a storm, and they are not going to make it in time for the ball. Oh, no. You know, he says, you know, they came from some sort of uh, neighboring country that's like, uh, it has a coast uh, that kind of shares with this one. And uh, he, he says, um, now, uh, I have been asked to provide entertainment for the night's, uh, for, for the party. And, uh, well, I've been watching some of you, and I, I would like to open an invitation, as it were, to uh, anyone who thinks that they may be able to um, give a good name to the Harmony Opera House by being a dazzling performance for the night's entertainment. We would be, I believe, uh, performing selected scenes from the Celestial Trumpet. We've been practicing that, practicing that anyway, and uh, you're all very familiar with it. We could accentuate it a bit and maybe uh, bring some of the uh, particular context of the ball to bear, change some of the lines, uh, make it unique for the night, but uh, it would be something you'd be very familiar with already. Is there anyone who, uh, or he, he doesn't probably like phrase it as a question. He says, if there is anyone who would be interested in this opportunity, I would trust that you would see me after the uh, day's practice to uh, discuss whether or not I think you would be a good fit for the, uh, for the night. That is all. Continue with your performances. Uh, I will see you later this evening. Uh, thank you. And he just like walks away. And so it's not like a guarantee that like, oh, you got the job, but like he, you know that he noticed you 
and he and you're like mm, okay. but like i was really good you were you were very good yeah. so was that routine or difficult that was a routine for dance yeah it was a dance routine you're <laughs> correct it was a dance routine. that was a test caleb <laughs> and you passed nice nice uh yeah okay cool so uh i think we well we probably I'm gonna do get my break mm -hmm. we follow bertrand crozier and uh he um he goes to uh marco's room that he like has uh here in the harmony opera house and he kind of like knocks on the door and he, you can tell we can tell on his face that he's just like oof like i know marco's had a bad day and i'm like almost like wincing as i even knock on the door how hurt am i again uh, you just have like a one wound die penalty right now well, i don't know what that means uh it just means that uh mm. on most skills and well, stats but what and does stuff. that mean what does that mean for me as a character though? oh for you as a character um well you got <laughs> like punched and stuff let's see you but am i gonna be limping am yeah I let me, let's like... check i think it depends on what stat we took away from was remember. it speed i don't remember does anyone remember i certainly don't i um... didn't know i was supposed to keep track of that i i mean you I, I didn't know either. Agility or speed would make sense, but... Well, I think it would either be... Yeah, you had a 3-4 to begin with. I think it was speed. So, yes, you probably have some sort of a limp right now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, like, hurt your leg pretty bad, basically. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, he knocks on the door and says, Marco. What? Oh, you're right. Depends on how, what you mean by that. Um, well, I know that you're not... All right, but, uh, I, um, well, it's... What do you want? I'm just curious how the investigation was going. A cat at this point, he opens the door, just glares at him. How do you think it's going? <laughs> well, um, uh, Marco, I know you've had a, a bit of a rough turn here, but, um, I am paying you good money to, uh, well, I... The, f the funeral is soon for um, my good friend, and I I would like to see justice before too long. Do you have any information? Well, the prime suspect is dead. Uh, the one person, well, and the one other person I could talk to, I tried to, and yeah. <laughs> um, right. So not very well then. Not, not going very well. No. Well, um, there might be something that, um, well, th th there's someone here to see you. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't really know if it was related to the, uh, to the, um, investigation. Uh, now, y you know, Marco, that I don't judge, and I... I wouldn't tell your wife if uh, you didn't want me to. Um, <clears throat> Marco, there's a prostitute to see you. How would he respond to that? <laughs> um, it's no, it's 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 not that. Um, she was there when I got um this, and I just kind of point to my leg. That's ah. Broken. So, so this this does have to do with the investigation. You're not just using my money on prostitutes. I sure hope it has to do with the investigation. <laughs> <laughs> he nods slowly. Do you want me to send her in? Yeah, then? yeah. Go ahead. All right. And he kind of like puts a hand on your shoulder. It will it will get better, Marco. Kind of like <laughs> reassures you. Try to, and then and then leaves. <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, Grace Kindlin comes. Um, and uh, right, great Grace Kindlin is this prostitute that you met. Um, she looks like this. She's played by uh, Lily Reinhardt. Um, and uh, she she kind of like um, is obviously you know pretty um, uh, disheveled. Uh, doesn't isn't wearing very nice clothes, but uh, she she kind of steps in. Uh, I think that like door is like slightly ajar, and she kind of like knocks on the door, but you can obviously see her. Come in. 
Uh, you said that I should come see you if there was anything. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, I'm scared, Marco. Um, there was something I didn't tell you, and I didn't tell you for a good reason, but I think, I think I should tell you now. There was a, his child, Ferent's child, survived. I. Oh. Hi, what's up? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was such a funny bark. Um, I helped him. He was scared. He was so. Someone killed his father, and he he heard the whole thing. I I think he might be able to help you, Marco. But I I'm only going to take you there if if you can help us help him i think someone wants to kill him too I, i'm not sure why or how i there's only so much that i can do for him mm. i i'll say <clears throat> I'll, I'll talk to bertrand and see what i can do for him Oh, all right. If anything, heck, he can stick around for me, with me. He, she, she, is he? Yeah, he. Okay. Um, she she nods and says, "Um, yes, that would be that would be good." Um. Well, should I take you yeah. to him then? Let, let, let's go. Okay. And, and she, the, the whole time when you guys, like, leave, she's just, like, jumping at shadows. Um, she seems super paranoid about something. Um, and, uh, yeah, eventually she takes you to, like, some sort of, like, slum house um, in the same neighborhood um, that you were in before. Um, and she kind of, like, knocks on the door. And a, an older kid, um, like, 14 um answers um this uh young lady um she's yeah short cropped hair um she's dressed definitely like um like a boy but you can you can tell um it's a it's a gal um she kind of has you know ruddy cheeks and, and she just kind of like glares up at, at you marco particularly and, and then looks at grace who's he and, and grace says he's he's help he's he's here to help it's fine, Madeline. It's fine. And Madeline just kind of like grunts and then like swings the door wider open. And, um, you know, you come in, it's just this kind of like pretty run down house. And you see this little boy. Um, he is, he looks like this. Um, and uh, he, he's dirty, scared. In, in the corner of the room, um, and he kind of lo looks up and just kind of like a blank stare sort of a thing. And Grace kind of, you know, leans down and says, Chiston, this is, this is Mr. Marco Tisby. He, he wants to find out what happened to your father. He wants to help. And then Tristan kind of just like looks at you with like a blank stare. Like there's like no emotion on this kid's face. And he just... Stares at you. Is he sitting like on a bed? He's like sitting in the corner of a room, basically. There's like maybe like a sack of flour next to him or something. Um. Has his knees like up near his face, just kind of like holding his legs. I'll just sit down next to him and just kind of sit there and wait. Okay. Yeah. You just like sit there for a while. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I think it's like a couple minutes pass, and and Grace at first is just like waiting for something to happen, and then she kind of like realizes the like the significance of it, and then kind of like steps away to like fix you both some something to eat, um, and uh, and then Tristan eventually like he's just staring straight ahead, basically not not really looking at you once you sit down, 
and then you notice from the corner of your eye that just a single tear just like goes down his cheek after like you know three or four minutes of this and then he says they killed my daddy you know what he looked like he didn't have no hair I only saw him for a little bit. I hid in the, I hid in the pantry. He, he had a, a deep voice. He, he didn't say his name, but he, and then he just starts to like, kind of like, choke sob a little bit here and does that for a little while and you can't really get much more out of him do you i just what, wait what do you, do? you just wait <laughs> okay i want uh, let's see i feel like there's there should be a test here somewhere um i think he i think he asks you i think he says what will you do what will you do if you find him? I don't think it's up to me what happens to him, unfortunately. You should kill him, Mr. Tisby. You should kill him. Yeah. I... <laughs> this is gonna come off awful, which is gonna make it fun. Um... I'm going to pull out my knife. Okay. I always have my knife on me. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, just so, pull a knife on the kid. So right no, I'm not, gonna, I'm no, not no, no. pulling it on him. I'm just no. pulling it out. Oh, of course. Yeah, so right away, Madeline, the, the girl, he's, she's been, like, watching you from the corner of her eye the whole time, and right away, she just, like, steps steps near near you and, like, puts a hand to her, like, inside her, like, trousers and, like, seems like she's going to get something out. I was like, oh, just freak out. <laughs> yeah, and then Grace is just like, Stop. Stop. And she kind of like gives you a death glare like I'm watching you. I was going to show you something. I, I actually Wait, did he say what how he killed him at all? Um no, not yet. Oh. Uh, no, so I'll just kind of have it I was like how did he kill your daddy? And he, he doesn't answer you. Like you can tell you, you you can tell that there you need to give him some sort of promise or something that he can hold on to, something solid that before he he he's gonna care enough. He's he's like suspicious of you at this okay. point. What? I, I was gonna say. Hey, you're fine. I was good. I think I just poked myself. Um, <laughs> I'll say. You know, it sounds. Oh. Oh wait. I'll still wait. You know, I was going to say, you know, Tristan, I know it sounds all great to get your revenge, to take those who've taken from you, but I can tell you from firsthand experience holding my knife, yeah, it doesn't make you feel better. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I think that's an ugly truth roll. I think that's that, that's what that is, right? You're just like, revenge doesn't satisfy, kid. <laughs> Trust me, I've been in the game a long time. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, let's let's find out what that ob would be. Mm-hmm. I think that's an ob one. I don't think it's terribly complicated a, a concept. Okay. Yeah, so ob one, ugly truth. I think that's you're in your being learned right now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. There you go. Nice. Uh, you can mark a bubble on ugly truth there. And uh, 
yeah, he 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 starts crying again, and this time I think he like puts his head like on your like chest, basically. He just kind of like starts weeping into your chest. And I'll put my arm around him. Yeah, and put the knife away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Madeline relaxes only after the knife is away. Um, and uh, yeah, after he's kind of cried himself out a little bit, he says. Um, let me let me double check real quick. Um, specifically, the uh, information I know about this. Um, he says, um, "I know, I know. We had a gun." I don't think he used it though. He was he was going to, but my pa knocked him out, knocked out of his hand before he could. Um. Then he did. He used his knife then instead. Um. He kept saying something about. Um. Where is my note here? He says, my pa kept saying something about that he, he, um, I'm trying to think of how do you phrase this. My pa seemed to know him. He, he had seen him before. I didn't. I didn't know him, but Pa said that he he wouldn't do what he wanted him to do, and that it was his fault for everything that happened. I'm not sure what everything was, but that's that's all I really know. He killed my Pa, and I think he was gonna try to I think he was gonna try to find me and kill me, but then. Someone, someone saw him. Someone saw what was happening and yelled, and then he ran away. Who saw what happened? Um, I think it might have been um, old man Nolan, maybe. He lives near us. Old man, what? Nolan. Uh, the Batman guy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, first name, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, and so you, I mean, you can tell, like, from the way this kid is, like, talking, he's very observant. Like, he obviously, like, paid attention to all of these details. Um, and there's just, like, a look in his eyes where you, you can just tell that he's, like, a very, like, perceptive kid. But yeah, he, he looks at you again and says, Grace is scared. And then you see Grace like look up from the food that she's like making and and like kind of like flush a little bit. Um, and then Tristan like nods. She's scared. Someone tried to someone tried to grab her the other day. Um I turned to Grace and she was in earshot. Yeah, she's like in, the, you know, it's like a one room house basically. Okay. Um, so Grace kind of like walks over, gives you like a bowl of like radish soup, um, gives the same thing to the kid. Um, and uh, he says, I, I think it was someone who, well, I don't really know who it was. Didn't I, match the description? I couldn't really tell. It was dark. I screamed, and he basically ran as soon as I did. I just... There's something wrong about all of this, and I, I'm just a... I'm just me. I, I can't protect him if there's something else happening here. And then Grace like looks at Tristan and says, 
You're going to go with Mr. Tisby, all right? No, is it just her and this other one kid? Uh, that's all you've seen. Is it just, so I'll say, is it just the three of you? Um, Madeline says, no, we have Rolf, too. He's out being a porter. And then Rolf Grace. Grace, is... like, yeah, Grace says, Rolf is my son. <clears throat> well, I'll do my best to keep... I'm... Oh, what's the worst way to word this? I'll do my best to see what I can do for Tristan. When that's done, I'll see if there's anything we can do for you guys too. Yeah, she kind of gives you like a wan smile, like, oh, that's the that's not a promise you're gonna keep, sort of a situation. I mean, I'm gonna try. It's uh, not mm -hmm. I didn't guarantee anything. <laughs> yeah. Um but she says, Thank you. Well, it's about time we head off then, Tristan. He nods. And, and I think he, like, thinks about it for a second. He's like, am I like your partner now, then? You're the only one who's seen anything so far, so kind of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of nods seriously to himself, and he says, I won't let you down, Mr. Tisby, sir. Let's nod. And... Hello, left one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> well, we all know how that turned out. Uh, anyway. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think the scene ends there. Um, Josephine or Vivienne? Do either of you have a thing you would like to do in the immediate? I honestly don't know what I'm going to do next yet. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, Joe's just preparing for the funeral. Right. Um, you know, getting that ready. I don't know. I thought maybe we were going to do a time skip to like the funeral or. Yeah, there'll definitely be uh, a bit of a time skip here. Um, because we were going to go to the ball, right? Yeah, the ball is at the end of the week. I think the funeral, I mean, the funeral will happen before that. It's like the middle of this week, yeah. probably. Um, and we have to prepare for the ball to perform exactly, there. Yeah. We can't just time skip before <laughs> the entertainment is sorted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's start there then. Uh, Josephine, let's do. Um, so I think they're, I mean, we could probably just like do the funeral maybe. I'm trying to think of what else like you need so. to prepare I mean, for. Exactly. I mean, I found the person to prepare. Right, everything. you did, exactly. So. Um, mm -hmm. um, so I think I just need to present myself well at the funeral maybe. Well, I yeah, know. I mean, there's some stuff that's going to happen at the funeral. So let's let's actually do this real quick. Um let's do kind of like the setup for the funeral here. So I have um Lady Jocelyn Marquant, um the the gal who is going to set up this funeral stuff. Um okay. so first off, she's going to make she has some skills here. She's going to make a funeral wise roll. Okay. To know which person is this funeral for? Uh, Maxence Picard. Or the only Maxence well, Picard. I was gonna say the only person who's died, but no, that's not true. <laughs> that's. I First just person. wanted to make sure. I'm <laughs> yep. assuming it was that person, yep, but Picard. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. Yes. So the um, that's another thing I guess that happened is the the Forsaken Quill Society was like, let's set up the the exact sort of funeral that this ancient empire we all like to study would do for this guy. Um. So okay. that's another thing. That to happened. honor him. Exactly. <laughs> So uh, of course. She's going to fork in ancient history, folklore, library wise, obscure history, doctrine, relic wise, religious oh my history. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Saint wise and rituals wise. Just wow. like a couple. Just this like a her, couple. This things. is her thing. Like, this is her exact thing. She is applying an entire silverware drawer to this room. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> wow, I just, yeah, I, yeah, I just got like... it too. That's funny. Uh, okay. So let's see. What, what is the role for this? So this is basically knowing all the stuff to prepare for the funeral. She's also going to have to be right. the person who, like, does the actual like service right um that's right. that's her ritual skill that she will use um okay. so i think it's gonna be an ob four to 
okay. come up with this funeral. There you go. Okay. Oh, yep. Boom. I was like, if she doesn't say <laughs> made for this. Like she had 12 dice, so it would be very embarrassing if she failed that one. Uh, yep. So let's see. Does she need... Yeah, she does need a routine on her funeral-wise. So... Basically, we see a montage of her um, basically, like, taking charge of the Forsaken Quill Society to get you guys to be the manual labor for setting up this funeral. Um, it's in the, the church of uh, whatever this religion is called. Um, what is the, this religion called? Give me a second. I wrote this down somewhere. Um, <laughs> Gotta find my wiki. <laughs> I've been slowly making articles on this wiki for this world. Oh, man. While we're waiting, everybody should check out patreon.com slash Caleb and Powers. Thanks. thanks. Uh, link below on the YouTube video, you know. You can click that link and become a patron and I get cool it. stuff, like stuff that Caleb writes, uh, literature-wise or music-wise. True, true. That is, once again, patreon.com slash Caleb and Powers. <laughs> After that's for commercial break, yeah. <laughs> What's funny is you know once... something that I, mm -hmm. you know something that I rediscovered the other day, Buck's bad beats on mm -hmm. SoundCloud. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't think that you exists. actually made one. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's the Radiant Church. That's what the, the official like state religion is called. <laughs> the Radiant Church. <laughs> um, what? What you say? My church is called Radio. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't even realize that. <gasps> I forgot. Okay. Yeah, that was not intentional. Uh, yeah, so it's the Radiant Church. Um, and, uh, yeah, you guys deck out this, like, fancy noble church that everybody, all the nobles have their funerals at with the, the older ancient um, relics and uh, decorations and whatever else uh, minutia uh, goes into preparing for a funeral like this. Um, it, it kind of borderlines on sacrilegious, but since it's technically the same religion, just like a very older version of it, um, you get away with it. Um, but there's definitely some weird looks from the priests. Um, but you know, the priests are like, uh, the noblemen get to do what they want. Uh, so. Right. We pay your bills. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, that happens. And, uh, yeah, basically the funeral is set up for for the next day more or less um right because like an all-day event kind of a thing mm -hmm, where people just exactly. come and just pay their respects put so, out a flower maybe exactly right um so i'm trying to think i know crozier would be there i know josephine you're going to be there the rest of the forsaken quill society is going to be there um does anyone else go i don't think actually i think um i think the your family vivian would go and they would bring you even though you're i mean okay. you're, you're just grounded yeah, from the garden say, you're not grounded uh, from specifically right. you're still under event you're under dad's supervision or mom's yeah. supervision yeah. whatever so yeah it's okay i'd probably be there to scout the area yeah yeah so we can assume that everybody's gonna be there except for marguerite yeah i would not be there for fear of uh seeing young lord frederick <laughs> yes long lord frederick claver is also definitely going to be there because since it seems like something he would be at yeah maxis picard <laughs> was technically a distant cousin of his as is yeah. you know the august are distant cousins of maxis as well as are all the nobility technically true yes other. exactly yeah um oh you're fine stop um obviously not if she's whining <laughs> she's just dramatic like her dad um Okay, yeah, so that's the plan. That's the um, the the setup there. And let's go ahead and take a... Excuse me? <laughs> let's go ahead and take a quick break, and then we'll come back and we'll do the funeral. We'll do stuff at the funeral. Yay! All right, we'll be right back with more funeral shenanigans and... Uh, oh, did I say shenanigans? Uh, I didn't mean shenanigans. When we come back here on Lavender Shadows. Stick around. 